Hi, welcome to Simri P. My name's Sue. Today I'm going to share a really simple butter cake in a special method. It's a method that I've borrowed from a very famous baker in America. And I'm going to show you how to do a reverse creaming method today. So if you'd like to see more, stay around. So step one, we need to turn the oven on to 170 degrees C with a fan and pop the shelf just on the lower third rack. And in this bowl, I'm going to mix all the flour. So a little tip, I'm doing white spelt flour and I'm putting three, sorry, I'm putting 280 grams in there and I'll pop some other measurements above. And a little tip to make cake flour so you get a nice soft blend or lighter blend, put three tablespoons of corn flour. In um, many shops in America or the US, you can buy cake flour here in Sweden. I haven't seen it. Um, so this is a little way of doing it. And if you don't have corn flour, you can just do all um, spelt flour or whatever flour you use. Into that, I'm going to do one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda or bicarb soda, as it's known in other countries, and the sugar. That's just one cup or 200 grams, just regular white sugar. I'm going to mix those together just to combine all the ingredients. Okay, so the new method I'm showing you today is a foolproof way of having a really velvety cake and you don't overmix it. So what we're going to do, we're going to add the butter into this flour mix now. So I've got 125 grams and this method was made famous back in the 80s by an American baker and author called Rose Levy Barenbaum. Hope I've said the name correctly. And she first started doing this method and now she, or she then did it in all of her cakes. And I've made it this way a few times and I have to say it's really simple. So the butter's soft. I've got salted butter because that's all I've got here today. And I'm just going to mix that until the butter goes really fine, like breadcrumbs. That'll take a few minutes. So at the moment, I've got a few larger bits of butter. I'm going to keep um, blending that until they're really kind of a bit smaller. I've just made that go a bit higher in speed. I think most of that, I've got one or two larger pieces, but I think that's fine. I'll just bump that down a bit. That was flour, not. So have a look at that. So I'm going to keep you zoomed in to do the next step. So before we started filming, I've got some soya milk here, one cup, 250 mils. I've added four tablespoons of lemon juice. I want to show you. So it kind of goes thick like yogurt and that creates like a buttermilk consistency. In there, I'm going to throw my three eggs. You can do medium or large. I've only got medium today and I should have weighed them, but it should be fine. It's going to blend those together with the fork. And into that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, if you're somewhere where you want to use vanilla, sugar, you can do that. Just add it to the dry ingredients first. One teaspoon. I'll give that a stir. Now, while the mixture is going on low, we're going to add only half of this. And let it mix and combine. And if you think it needs stopping to scrape, you can do that. I'm going to mix it on a little bit higher for 20 seconds. I just count to 20 slowly. Okay, so we've got this kind of thick batter and I'm going to pour in the rest of the mixture. And I'll start on low just to combine it. For about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to make it go faster for 20 seconds. And now I have this beautiful, really smooth batter. 
I'll give it one last check to see if there's any, there's a few harder bits left. So I'm going to just scrape those off and give it another quick 20 seconds. And just check the bottom because sometimes when you use a mixer like this, the bottom gets stuck. Another 20 seconds. Got this perfectly smooth batter in no time. So now we're ready to pour this into our cake tin. And before we started filming, I've just prepared the cake tin. I've greased it with butter and lined it with paper. And I just cut my paper on the sides just so I've got a nice smooth edge. The other thing I should have mentioned too is this batter, or this cake is perfect to make the day before you want to go somewhere. Um, the other evening I made it because I wanted to take it to school and share with my Swedish um, colleagues or Swedish classmates. And it doesn't go dry. And so it's a great cake if you wanted to make a birthday cake. You can put it into um, like a round cake tin and then cut it in half or you can do it in um, a couple of smaller cake tins and frost it in the middle. So it's kind of like that go-to cake recipe. I'll give it a few taps to get any air bubbles out. I'm gonna bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes. I'll make sure it's golden brown and the skewer comes out clean that, to make sure it's cooked on the inside. So my cake's all cooked. It's got a little bit of a bump and a crack, but we're gonna cover that with buttercream frosting but I'm gonna let it completely cool for at least two hours and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to frost it. So my cake is nice and cold now and it's ready to start making the buttercream. This buttercream is light and fluffy and not too sweet. And I like adding a little bit of lemon and vanilla to get like a nice zingy flavor. So in the bowl, I've got some softened butter. That's 125 grams. And if it's not too um, soft, you can whip it or beat it with your beaters, but mine's quite soft. And I've got 250 grams of icing sugar. I'm just gonna sift it over. It's better to sift it because icing sugar often has lumps. So this will get the lumps out. So I'm just gonna beat this up until it's combined and then I'll add the flavorings. Just gonna make sure it doesn't go everywhere. I like just doing short bursts to combine the um, ice and sugar. Otherwise, if you do it too high too quickly, it all jumps up in your face. So look how white and light and fluffy that is. I'm gonna add some lemon juice. About a teaspoon, I'll just see what I've got in this jar. I've got I'll do one and a half teaspoons to start with, or maybe two. I like it lemony. And then I'm gonna do just half a teaspoon of vanilla. This vanilla I got given as a gift from Mexico and it's quite strong. So I'm just gonna do half a teaspoon. And I realized when I was baking my cake, I forgot to put in the lemon zest. It's optional. Um, so I've got a little bit there from the lemon that I squeezed. So I'm just gonna use that as decoration on the top. Gonna check what that tastes like. Mm. I love the combination of the vanilla and the lemon, um, but you don't have to do both. It's time to start icing the cake. This is a great way to cover any cracks or ununiform <laughs> bops. Today, mine got a little crack and went a bit bumpy for some reason. So I'm going to do all of this. I don't go down the sides. I'm just going to do it on the top. And I do it in a very creative way. It 
So I just go over it with this spatula and do like a rustic wavy kind of pattern. And now you can decorate this with chopped nuts, toasted coconut, a little bit of fresh fruit if you like, um, sprinkles. Voila, that's my um, spelt butter cake. I'll cut into it and do a little taste test. I'll just clear the bench. This cake, I think, is even better the next day. But check that out. We've got this kind of velvety sponge. Mmm. Can a cake be light and dense at the same time? This is what this is. The velvety texture is so good. And the zingy frosting just makes it... I don't usually like lots of frosting on cake, but this is a really good basic cake. Mm. So if you're looking for an easy spelt butter cake go-to method, go-to cake that you can transform into a celebration cake, or just if you want to have make cake for afternoon tea, this is a really good one. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know if you give it a go. Don't forget, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here today and pop a thank you down below if you want to help support me by adding a little donation super thanks so I can buy some flour or some butter and I'll see you next time. Don't forget, I'll add links up above for some more spelt recipes. Thanks again. Bye. Yum, yum, yum.